Hi, this is John Mercer, and welcome to session number one. Now, in this series, I'm going to coach you step by step through the entire process of understanding what anxiety and panic really are, and then what's causing your anxiety and panic, and then practical steps, exercises that you can use to begin eliminating these things from your life right away. Now, in just a moment, I'll tell you a little bit about me and my experiences with anxiety and panic attacks. But before we get started, I want you to make sure that you have a notebook and a pen handy. So I'm going to ask you to write some things down from time to time, and occasionally I'm even going to give you a little assignment to do after the video is over. Now, don't worry, this is not going to be anything complicated. It'll be a very simple assignment. It won't take up much of your time, but it is important that you do these things. So if you need a minute to get a notebook, just hit pause on the video and come back. All right, now I hope you did that, and I hope you've got your notebook and you're ready to go. Let me tell you a little bit about the series. The videos are numbered, and you need to do the series in the numbered order. If you skip around, you're going to get lost, because this information builds from one video to the next as we go. Secondly, you will notice right away that these videos are very, very simple, and I keep them very informal. I'm not reading a teleprompter. I'm you know, referring to my notes from time to time. I might even have a drink of tea over here or something. So I keep it very laid back. It's really just me and you with the camera in between. I want you to have the experience you would have if you were sitting here in the office with me and I was coaching you one-on-one -on -one through the entire process. Okay? So uh, let's talk about what anxiety causes in your life as we get started here. And I want to give you the first big point uh, to begin with. The first big point that you can begin using today to make serious changes in your life and how anxiety and panic is affecting your life. Now, a lot of people feel very isolated and alone when they have anxiety problems and panic attack problems. The reason for that is, it's not that anxiety and panic are uncommon. They're not. They're very, very common. But it's because most people hide their anxiety and panic attack symptoms. And they hide it from the world. And some people become very good at hiding these symptoms from the world. Maybe you've done that yourself. I've certainly done it myself, and I'll tell you more about that later. But anxiety and panic symptoms uh, feed off of this insecurity, this fear. So if you're ashamed or you're afraid that people will find out about your anxiety situation, it always makes the situation worse. And in fact, that's the first thing I want you to write down in your notebook. At the top of the page, I want you to write, Hiding anxiety always makes the situation worse. Now, this is something that you can begin doing today to make a big difference. Because to the extent that you can become more open, more honest and straightforward about the situation you're dealing with, then you take some of the power away from the anxiety and the panic. The reason for this is that anxiety and panic feed off of fear. And when you're ashamed or embarrassed about something, that's a fear-based emotion. Anxiety and panic just eat up fear. They love it. They thrive off of it. So, as you begin being more open and honest about these things, you take away some of their power. Okay. Now, and it doesn't mean you have to shout it from the rooftops, that you have to yell it out to st complete strangers. But if there are people close to you in your life, talk to them about it, and let me tell you how to speak to other people about anxiety and panic attack problems. The first word I will use is this. Be unapologetic. Okay? There is nothing to apologize for. There's nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed about. It is no more your fault that you have anxiety or panic attack problems than if you had the common cold. So, there's, if you had a common cold, you wouldn't be ashamed of it. You just have a cold, you deal with it, and you get on with your life. That's exactly the way you need to look at these problems, because they are exactly the same. Now, to the extent that you can be more honest with people, especially those closest to you, and be more open about it, as I said, you will find that it takes some of the power away from the anxiety and panic, and you can begin seeing an improvement immediately as you begin doing that. Now, it may take more than that in your situation to really get you to the point where you're free of these problems, but that's a really good start. And in fact, I have never known anyone to recover from anxiety or panic without first stopping this behavior of hiding and being ashamed of it. You need to be open and straightforward about it. Now, I can tell you that today, 
I can be very open and straightforward and talk to you in this way, in a very candid way, about these problems, but that wasn't always the case. And I'll tell you a bit more about me and you'll see what I mean. But uh, I suffered with a severe anxiety and panic attack problem for nearly 25 years. I had agoraphobia, social anxiety, generalized anxiety, and several other of the so-called conditions related to anxiety. And I've had pretty much every symptom that a person can have, from tightness in the chest, feeling short of breath, rapid heartbeat, feeling that I was going to black out, that the world was closing in on me, uh, tingling in the extremities, flu-like symptoms, soreness in the muscles and in the body in an unexplained way. I've had just so many of these things, stomach problems and other things. And I think because I had these problems for so long, uh, what I did was just basically morph from one set of problems, one set of symptoms, to another. I would have the breathing difficulties for a while and that would morph into, uh, I thought I was having a heart attack or heart palpitations, and that would morph into soreness in the body, uh, a feeling of neuralgia, of soreness in the face, all kinds of things. And they were all anxiety symptoms. I saw many doctors and they always said, you're healthy as a horse. It's simply anxiety. So anxiety can cause real physical symptoms in your body. Don't kid yourself and think they can't. Now, if you're suffering with pretty bad physical symptoms, it's always a good idea to go to a medical doctor so that you can be sure you can have peace of mind. But once they tell you there's no physical cause for these symptoms, you, you know that they're going to be anxiety. So trust the doctors when they tell you that and understand that it is very common for people to have very real and even painful physical symptoms from anxiety. Now, about me, as well as suffering for so long with anxiety and panic and having all these symptoms, um, I tried a lot of different things over the years to recover from it. And I can tell you that I have made virtually every mistake that a person can make when it comes to dealing with anxiety and panic. And that's good news for you because it means I have a lot of experience with what not to do, okay? And knowing what not to do is half the battle. I can tell you the things such as hiding your anxiety, for example, that always make the situation worse. And as well as that, I developed my own program, my own exercises that helped me to overcome this. And it's a process of establishing new habits based on a couple of pretty simple techniques that I'll be teaching you later in the series. And it's really turned my life around and I've coached a lot of other people now on the same techniques and they've seen great results and I know you're going to as well. Now, what I do and what I don't do, this is important to talk about because if you need a medical doctor or if you have medical problems, you need to see a medical doctor and that's not what I do. Okay, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I'm also not going to give you therapy. What I do is coach people. I'm in fact a personal development coach and I work with people to make changes in their life. All sorts of changes, not just overcoming anxiety. I work with people from everything from losing weight, developing confidence, all kind of things. But the process of change is, is very similar throughout all of these things because there are two different ways that you can go about making a change in your life. And I want to talk about this before we get into the meat of the program so you understand the best way to go into this series. Now, the two ways to change your life. The first way is to start from a position of feeling very bad about yourself. Feeling very bad about who you are, about your situation and your life. And saying, I've got to change, I've got to make things better because I do not accept this the way it is. I feel terrible about it. That's the first way. Now, you probably know what I'm going to tell you, but I'll say it anyway. That way never works. That is not a good way to make change in your life. And I've worked with enough people now to see that for a fact. The way to make serious change in your life, to make a lot of progress quickly, is the second way, and it is this. Get to a place where you feel good about yourself as you are right now. Warts and all, even with your anxiety or panic problems, Feel good about yourself, your life, and who you are right at this moment. Accept yourself and accept your situation. And as you do that, say, I accept myself as I am, and I'm going to continue to improve and make things better and better. Now, this may sound like just wordplay, you know, but it's not. This is a very big difference in your attitude. 
And attitude is everything when you're working on making changes in your life like this. So the way you want to go is to begin from a feeling of feeling okay about yourself exactly as things are right now. And this is based on a very simple idea. I'll give you a proverb that explains this and I want you to write this down. It is easier to improve a good situation than it is to try to fix a bad situation. Now, if you have any doubts about whether that's true, just ask, uh, you know, ask an old doctor with a lot of experience and they'll normally tell you that's absolutely true. Much easier to fix a good situation than to try to fix something that's bad, right? So what we're going to do in this system is we're going to improve your good situation. We're not going to fix any bad situations because you don't have a bad situation. And I'm going to talk to you about that now. You may be thinking at the moment, you may be thinking, well, John, you're lying to me. I do have a bad situation. I can barely tolerate it. You don't understand how bad my problems are, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tell you, first of all, that I do because I've been there. I've had anxiety so severe that a few times I felt that I just couldn't go on with my life. Okay, So I may seem like I'm happy and feeling good now, but and I even joke about this stuff, but I don't want you to misunderstand and think that I don't understand how serious and hurtful these, these problems are because I've been there. I've been so severely depressed because of this that you know I was on antidepressants and other things and sought the help of doctors and therapists uh, because I just I, I couldn't go on that way. Now if you're feeling that way, the first thing I, I want to say is if you're in that state of mind where you feel that things are so bad I don't know if I can go on, then you need to pause the video, call a doctor, and see a medical doctor. Okay. Now that's not saying this video can't help you or that therapy or other things can't help you, but it's saying that first you need to go to a medical doctor even if you have to go to the emergency room. If you're feeling so despondent that you don't know if you can go on with things, if it's that severe, you need to get stable first. Now, hopefully you're not in that situation and you can begin today with the series. Now, as we go through this program, there's one more thing I want to let you know about it. This is not a series. This is not a program that you can fail at. Now, I know that probably sounds very arrogant or something, or cocky, but it's not meant in that manner. What I mean to say is, this is not something that it's a pass or fail series. What I'm trying to say is, the information I'm going to give you is the kind of information that once you have it, you simply have it. Once you know it, you know it, and you can't even pretend you don't have it. You could compare this to reading, for example. Uh, some people can remember when they were a small child before they had learned how to read. And they can remember looking at, for example, road signs on the side of the road. And it just looked like squiggly lines and they didn't understand what it said. Now, the road sign could have said, hey, free ice cream ahead. Or it could have said, danger, bridge out. But either way, they didn't know. They didn't have that information. So they were very much at a disadvantage. And that may be where you are right now with your anxiety situation. But here's the thing. Once, once this person learns to read, they can never again not you know, be at a disadvantage uh, when they see a road sign. They know what it says. They don't have to think about it. They just do. So they can't even pretend they don't have this information. If you see a road sign today that says bridge out, you know what it means and you know what you have to do about it. So this information I'm going to give you works exactly the same way. Once you have it, you have it and you can't even pretend you don't. And what this means is that anxiety and panic will never again be able to have the same. For more information, click on the link below.